Okay, today's short video is on the very use of pivot table. Um, how do you use pivot table in Excel? So here I have a very truncated set of um, data set for diabetes. Okay. So in, before we do that, let us look at some of the columns. What does it mean? Column A, this is the ID of the patient, basically patient ID. Column B is the where the patient comes from. C is the age of a patient, D is the gender, height and weight of the patient, height is in meters, weight is in kilograms, and then the body frame of the patient. So you can treat C, D, these five columns like um, uh, how the patient looks like. Okay. Then you have cholesterol level, high density lipoprotein, which is a, what we call as a good cholesterol, and the glycosylated hemoglobin, which is a representation of how much blood sugar you have. Okay, so the three highlighted in blue or purplish, they are the clinical parameters. Okay, so how do we actually do a pivot table and what can pivot table tell us? For example, if we want to just look at, okay, let's say in um, location. So there are two locations. How do I know there are two locations? The fastest way is I do a filter and then I look for how many locations there are. So there are two locations. Similarly, there are three types of body frames and hopefully there's only two genders. Yes, I have only two genders. All right, so let's remove that. So I could use pivot table to quickly summarize for me in each of the locations, how many males or females there are or in each location, how, how many um, patients are small, small frame, medium frame or large frame or any combinations of that. So let us do, to do pivot table or to start a pivot table, you start with insert and then you look at pivot table. Okay, so pivot table, what you need is to highlight all the data. Okay, um, you may not even want to highlight the ID because ID doesn't make, doesn't tell you a lot. So we go to a new data sheet. Okay. So you come up with this table here. Let me just reduce this to show it clearer. Okay, now the very first thing is, let's say if I want to look at um, in each location, how many males and females there are. So location, so the columns should be gender. So let me pull down gender into columns. So I have male and female. So then I have, I want to pull down the location. Okay, so now I have, Buckingham and Louisa. So I want to find the numbers. So I just go to a location again. Usually I use the same thing as a row. I pull down to the values. Yes. So what it tells me is these are the data. In Buckingham, I have 113 female patients and 84 male patients and so on. So can I do the reverse? As in, I want my row and column reverse. Yep. Just swap it of the row and column in the opposite sense. Okay. As you may realize that when I do the swapping, something just happened. This. What does this mean? It means that in my entire data set, based on females, 113 come from, I, I have a total of 232 females, out of which 113 come from Birkenham and 119 come from Louisa. Okay, blank simply means that the column or the cell has no data. So that should not be the case. So let us do something else. For example, I want to look at um, gender okay, and location. But instead of the count of location, can I want to find what is the average age? In my data set, what is the average age for female patients in Birkenham and female patients in Louisa. So instead of count, I will just remove. So in order to remove the field, just change to remove. I will take the age, drag it into values. Okay, so now what does 5,265 mean? Look at here the values. It means that that is the sum of age. So if I sum up all the ages for all the patients, all the female patients in Louisa, I get 
5,265 years. Well, that doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, why do I want to, all the ages? So I want, what I want is the average. From here, I can actually change the value field settings. And that gives me different stuff that I can count. I can have average. By default, it's sum. I can click on average. And then voila, this is the average age. Okay. So it means that in my patient samples, average age for females in Buckingham is 60, no, 46.6 years old. In Louisa, it's 45.3 years old. For males in Buckingham, average is 48.1. And for Louisa, it's 48.7. Okay. So you can start to play around with different things. You can even play around with what is the youngest patient I have. So it's a minimum. Correct? I look at minimum. Okay, I can even look at maximum. So let's, this is a minimum age. This is the maximum age. Okay. Now it doesn't allow me to just do the minimum or maximum age. I can do the age again. What happens if I want to look at both minimum and maximum age? So I can do that. I just add another age and I change one to minimum, one to maximum. Okay. So now what it tells me is in Birkenham, the minimum age for females patient is 92. No, the minimum age for female patients is 19 years old. Maximum is 92. While for males, minimum age for male patients is 20. Maximum age is 79. Basically, I'm just expanding here. I can, or I can, if I want to report minimum, then maximum, I can do that. I just swap. Look at this. Look at my highlighter row. I just swap. And you'll see that the age gets swapped as well. So now it's minimum to maximum instead of maximum to minimum. So you can do different things. Now, if you mess it up and you want to um, simplify, you want to reduce it, you can just remove the field. Okay, so I now have minimum age, you can remove the field. So some of you may just click it off and then, okay, now I'm going to, what am I going to do? The easiest way is, how do I bring up the table again? The easiest way is go to any part of this pivot table show list, show few list, and then you will pop up, all right? So let us try something. Can I find out what is the um, average cholesterol level? If average cholesterol level, so I, sum of cholesterol level doesn't make any sense. So I want the average of the cholesterol level. Okay. Now, now I have average cholesterol level for females in Buckingham and females in Louisa, for males in Buckingham and for males in Louisa. Now, if you realize that, if you go back to our data set, one of the important aspects is frame, body frame. So can I actually look at, does body frame makes a difference? Can I segregate it a bit more? Let's say within Buckingham, males, can I segregate into small, medium, and large body frame and look at the average cholesterol level? I can. Quite simply, it's the by rows, I have gender. So it's order by gender. Oops. Order by gender. Then what I want is, I want to go to the frame. I pull down the frame into rows. So now is by gender, by rows. So fem female, large, medium, small is in alphabetical order. So there's nothing much you can do about it. Males is also by large, medium, small. <clears throat> so you can actually see that generally smaller frame patients have a slightly lower cholesterol level in Birkenham. But in Louisa, um, it may not seem to be the case. Okay. So you can make inference. Of course, you can mess it up totally and then you go to use frame by location. How you're going to interpret it is up to you. In fact, this also makes some sense at this moment because female in Birkenham, large, medium, small. Okay, it's up to you. Okay. So you can even 
group by frame first, then group by gender by just changing the frame into the order by frame first, then order by gender. Okay, just I repeat again. Just in this case, it's order by gender, then order by frame. Okay, you, you can actually order by frame first by pulling the frame up. And now you have large, medium, small. So that tells you a lot of things. Now this really tells you that there may be some differences between the frames, right? All right, so pivot table is very flexible for you to work around. I can even do that. And then I can look at cholesterol. I can also look at high density lipoprotein at the same time. So I pull down to values. Now this becomes a bit messier. I also want the average high density lipoproteins. So now you can see that the column labels, this is Birkenham data. You have one for cholesterol, one for high density lipoprotein, and Louisa, you have one for cholesterol and one for high density lipoproteins. Okay. So this gives you the grand summary for the cholesterol in Birkenham. This gives you a grand average. Um, this is the average of cholesterol in Buckingham. This is the average of cholesterol in oh no, high density lipoprotein in Buckingham. This is for Louisa and this is for Louisa. So you can see that it's rather flexible. Okay. So start playing around with it and you'll find more users of pivot table. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you.